It's a one wheel pint. So I ordered this bad boy last week. Now if you're unfamiliar with the one wheel, looks like this. Basically it's a go-kart wheel with a self-balancing motor, an accelerometer, and a board going through it. And you lean to tell it which direction you wanna go. Now there are two models of one wheel, the Pint and the XR, which stands for Extra Radical. This Pint right here, just the board as it stands like this, was about 950 bucks. Let me actually look it up, I don't wanna make up prices. Okay, yeah, I was right. It's exactly 950 bucks before tax. And that's the cheap one. If you want the XR, the pricier model, which is a little bit bigger, goes a little bit faster, and has significantly more range, that's gonna run you more like 1800 bucks before tax. Now before I get into all this, let me start by saying I anticipate that I'm gonna like this thing, like a lot. I, I wouldn't have spent the money otherwise. Now, I've never ridden one before, I will be learning to ride it in this video. But before all that, we've gotta talk about a couple of things. So with my one wheel, I purchased two accessories. And I say accessories because I believe these ought to just come with the product. The first one is a fender. So once installed, the fender's gonna sit on top of the wheel, something like that. Now this serves a few purposes. One, it's gonna prevent you from clipping the running tire with your foot, because that seems like it wouldn't be great. And two, it's gonna stop anything that you run over, like water, dirt, pebbles, rocks, from flying up and hitting you in the face. Because without that fender, there's a pretty sizable gap between the tire and the board. I mean, it's not huge, but uh, riding without a fender just seems like a great way to send the rock to Barnes & Noble, if you know what I'm saying. Now, if you buy the board and a basic fender, they have fancier ones, that's just a basic plastic fender. If you buy them together in a package when you first buy the one wheel, then you get it at a slight discount. So for that, I paid 45 bucks. Without the discount, if you buy a a la carte from the website, it's 85 bucks. Or the carbon fiber version a la carte from the website is 175 bucks. Now, right now you might be thinking, yeah, okay, but I can at least see why they wouldn't include that. Like this was 950, maybe they wanted to keep the price under a thousand and they couldn't make it work and keep their margins if they included the fender. I don't know, whatever. Fine, you know, you, you gotta run the business, I understand. But then what's your excuse for this guy? Now this right here is a little silicone rubber charger port plug. Man, this thing's pretty heavy. And all that it does is it goes in this little charger port here. That's not the charger port. It goes in this little charger port here and it protects the charger port from getting like water and gravel and stuff in there. That's also extra. What? Why is that extra? This decision baffles me because it seems counterproductive to the reputation of the company. Like if I'm Future Motion, the company that makes the one wheel, wouldn't I want that port protected? Because if that port fails or water infiltrates and gets into where it's not supposed to be, then the whole board fails and I've got warranty claim requests and, and the general reputation of my company goes down because people are like, hey, one wheels don't last. I have to assume, because they don't include that, that this port doesn't actually really need to be protected. I, I have to imagine that they would put a port there if it really needed to be protected. But if that's true, if that is the case and it's fine without a port, they should still build one in, man. And not even one like this, because this, as you can see, this is not attached to the board in any way. So this is bound to piss off eventually. Like, I'll probably never see that again. So even if this port really doesn't need to be protected, I still think they should include it just to avoid the perception that they're nickel and diming people. Because that's really what it seems like, especially with that particular case. Those things bought in bulk, they're, they're pennies, maybe even fractions of pennies a piece. Even if you wanna charge an extra 99 cents per board to cover it, fine. The charger port, by the way, from the website costs three bucks. Let me go see if I can find that thing. I paid three bucks for it. Got it. Now I did order one other accessory, but it's not from Future Motion, the company that makes the one wheel. I ordered it from a third party. That other accessory is a replacement bumper. So this, this kind of front part of the board here will slide off and I'll replace it with this new bumper. And this new bumper isn't here yet, it's still in the mail, but I'll put it up on the screen here. It has what they call fangs, which are basically two tiny little wheels that are on the front of the bumper. Why you ask? Well, some people like to do tricks with them, something called fang drags where they kind of like Okay, before I can explain this, I have to explain a little bit about how this board works. So like I said before, you tell the one wheel which way you wanna go by leaning. But the one wheel can only go so fast and support so much pressure. So if you're topping this bad boy out and it cannot go any faster, but you're still pushing with your front leg to tell it to go faster, then it's actually going to push back against you. To basically tell you, no, no, that's all I got. Please stop that. So what people do when they do fang drags is they shove the board down past that pushback 
and roll those wheels across the ground. Does it look cool? No. Is it fun? Doesn't look like it, but that's what some people do with them. That is not why I got them. I got them purely as a safety precaution. The number one risk on a one wheel is something called a nosedive. That is where you push past the pushback or some other thing goes wrong. Maybe you're climbing on a hill and the ground is closer than you realize it is, uh, or there's some sort of electrical failure. I mean, it, things happen, elect electronics fail. And then the front of the board goes boop and boom, crash. What's that sound? It's you on the ground. <coughs> Now from what I've seen, it sounds like a majority of the time that that happens, it's user error. They were pushing too hard against the pushback when the board was telling them stop. But I don't wanna take my chances. Like I said, this thing is self-balancing with electronics and stuff goes wrong. A little wire gets loose to the battery and all of a sudden it loses power, boom, immediately you're going top speed and then you're just on the ground. So with the fangs, with the little wheels, you'll still roll and you at least have a fighting chance to get yourself out of the situation. And that Fang bumper, by the way, ran me about another hundred bucks. So all in on this one wheel pint after taxes, I am in $1,163.82. And again, that's for the cheap one. Now it is unfortunate that I don't have that yet because I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to ride without them even for a day, but uh, I need to go test this thing out. So I'm gonna get this thing charged up. I'm gonna get the fender installed and let's give it a shot. Do it, do it, turn green. Come on, do it, do it, yeah! Man, have helmets always been this awkward? Oh, uh, no thank you. Uh, eh. All right, well I hope I don't get attacked by geese, but uh, first thing I assume I need to do is turn it on. Okay, and then, so there's two sensors in the front of the pad, one on either side of the front pad, so it knows when both your heel and your toes are touching the board. There's two ways to stop on the one wheel pint. One way is what's called simple stop, so basically you just kind of like lean backwards and it will drop and let you get off. Or there's something called uh, the heel lift, where you take your heel off of that one sensor in the front and then that will let the board turn off. Apparently simple stop was introduced because people found the heel lift challenging for whatever reason. It doesn't sound hard to me, we'll see. Um, all right, let's see how it goes. Oh, oh, okay. You know, I thought this would come really natural to me, but uh, it's actually kind of hard. Okay, I'm definitely gonna turn simple stop off because I feel like it's messing me up more than anything. I, I lean back expecting to go backwards and I, I just get off the board. Okay, all right. I'm not positive what's making the nose drop like that. I, I'm just leaning forward, I think, and maybe I'm just pushing too hard, but I don't, I'm not sure why the nose is hitting the ground. Back foot on, front foot, both sensors engaged. Oh, hang on. Are both sensors engaged? I feel like that light is what tells me. Hmm, okay, so how am I placing my foot wrong here? Why can't it, if that's probably the problem, it, it thinks I'm taking off part of my foot. All right, hopefully that's better. All right, uh, we're going to get the damn it. Okay, so I've definitely got to practice how to place my front foot to keep both of those sensors engaged. It feels like I'm laying it really flat, but it's, it's just not picking it up. I'm gonna practice that for a little while uh, and not mess with the camera and uh, I'll be checking in. You guys wanna try it? You got you can try it. Okay. A few moments later. All right, I've got to say, this is, a lot, this is a lot harder than it looks. I've been able to go on a short ride. It definitely seems like the sensors don't act as sensitive once you're actually moving at a reasonable speed. But when you're like barely moving like I was before, it's like any little movement, it thinks you're taking your foot off the pad. For some reason, I can't really feel out which foot is more natural to put forward, which is strange because I ride a longboard. I mean, not well, but I do ride one. And it never feels weird 
but also I don't know which foot I put forward. I haven't learned how to turn around yet. I'm sure that holding an expensive camera is not the best way to learn, but here we are. Come on, foot sensor, feel it, feel it. Damn it. It's like... There we go. So, my legs are real wobbly, which is kind of a noob syndrome from what I've seen. Pretty much everybody just has the wobbles at first. All right, we're moving. We're going places slowly, very slowly, but we're going. What I'm really worried about is taking only my back foot off the pad and my front foot still is engaging the sensors. And it just like drags me around in a circle. Huh, wobbly, 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 wobbly. I'm at the end of the path. Let's see if we can turn around. Turn around, turn around. Turn around, shh, hit. No, still cannot turn around. All right, it's only been, I don't know, eight minutes of uh, practicing here, and I, I feel like I'm getting decently good at just going. I mean, obviously I'm not a pro, but compared to the first time I got on the board, I'm moving now. Like, I, I'm okay, I'm reasonably comfortable as long as I am not doing any sort of maneuvering. Oh, 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 okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so a quick word on the pint versus the bigger XR. The pint has a more curved rounded wheel, which gives it more carvability, which I'm sure is super fun and useful when you actually know how to ride it. But right now, when I'm just trying to learn, it's a little problematic because I'm picking up speed and then if I'm just not super confident, I'm not going super straight, and then all of a sudden, whoa, I'm getting a lot of this action. Which is what happened just now. Definitely think I feel less confident with my left foot forward. I think I'm a, I think I'm a right foot forward kind of guy. Yeah, that seems better. All right, here it comes again. Gotta do the thing. All right, the thing. We'll just do the, whoa, okay. Okay, shit, God. All right, we're gonna turn. Around. We're gonna turn around. Huh, huh. Okay. Huh. God dang it. No, come on. I'm not. I'm not satisfied with that. We gotta learn to turn around. Ugh. Okay. Here we go. Turn around. Turning around. Please turn around. God dang it. Uh, my pants are turning brown. Dang it. Huh. Oh, there it was. There it was. Took my foot off with the front foot still on it. <laughs> You know, I was I was looking at some used ones, and I was like, how are these things always so scuffed up? I get it now. Turn it around. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Not too much, not too much, not too much leaning. Not too much leaning. Not too much. Son of a... Okay, well, clearly turning around is an advanced maneuver for another day. All right, going forward, less of an issue. We're getting there with forward. All right, now, come on. This looks like a wonderful, spacious place to turn around. So we're just gonna whoop, whoop, whoop. And then we're gonna twist our ankles around. Damn it. <laughs> While it did end the most catastrophically, that was the closest yet. I really uh, underestimated the difficulty of this. I mean, I'm sure once you get it, it's, it's like second nature, but I just, I don't know, it looked so easy. Like I really thought I'd pick it up right away. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera away for today. Uh, I'll still practice for a few more minutes, uh, but I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I lied. I did not film on day two. It is now day three. So since my first day on the one wheel, there have been some developments. First of all, I have changed the ride profile on this from the default Pacific setting to Redwood. Redwood is more the beginner mode. So it limits the top speed a little bit. I think it brings it from 16 miles per hour top speed down to 12. But overall, I'm feeling much more confident on the board. Definitely not a pro by any standard, but I'm better. Oh, also I changed my mind about which foot I need to put forward. I'm definitely a left foot forward kind of guy. I've also been practicing turning around. Now on day one, I was trying to turn around solely by like making a really tight turn, a tight carve. 
which I still think is good to practice, but I found for really tight corners, the best way to turn around is not to turn at all, but to just kind of twist in place on the board. So I've been practicing that. It still usually takes me kind of two attempts to twist to get all the way around. I have gotten it all in one twist a few times, but I tend to knock myself a little bit more off balance that way, but I'm sure we'll get there. All right, let's try it. That was a drone shot from my from my very expensive drone, trust me. I gotta say, now that I can actually like, you know, ride it and not have to bail every 20 seconds, it's a lot of fun. I mean, the first day was honestly just kind of frustrating just because it's frustrating to suck at something. But now that I'm just mediocre at it, eh, eh, now we're getting somewhere. I can't, it's hard to, it's hard to raise your eyebrows with a helmet on. All right, I'm gonna keep practicing and uh, I think the next step is going to be to take this somewhere where there's actually like people around like out to a public park or something right now i'm just on like a trail that's in the back of my neighborhood but i think after today i should be good and comfortable enough to be able to ride this around people and one not make a fool of myself and two not hurt anybody See that? It's rolling forward. It's trying to piss off on me. Hey, I'm trying to get sick angles, man. You can't just you can't just leave. I'm starting to get good at carving. Got my thing. Go try speed bumps. Off road. So I ordered a new helmet because I didn't like the way that the other one fit. It has this like magnetic buckle where you just kind of like get it kind of close and it just clicks in there. And it has this little poppy outy hole that's also magnetic. So if you wanted to like lock it up with like a bike lock, you could. How do I look? Just as dumb? All right. Got a new back foot pad. So it's a bit more of a concave foot pad. It kind of wedges up. It's made of like a bit of a softer, more cushiony material. It's supposed to help with foot fatigue. So this is actually a motorcycle jacket. It's got padding built into the shoulders and the elbows. And then I got an extra pad that's gonna be for the back. This is leather grip meant for tennis rackets. I'm gonna wrap it around the handle on the one wheel so it's not so painful to hold. So I have had the one wheel for coming up on two months now. I've put about 130 miles on it and I can honestly say I do not regret my purchase. Riding this thing is just so fun and for me relaxing. Like I tend to reach for it when I'm feeling stressed and tense and need to unwind. To me there's just something very zen about it. And I think a lot of that can be credited to how quiet it is. I think if 
everything about the one wheel was exactly the same, but it, it had a loud motor, that would be a deal breaker for me. I wouldn't enjoy it nearly as much. But it's extremely quiet to the point where I can hear the noise of the tire on the road more than I can hear the motor. And I really appreciate that about it. Now I also don't regret my decision to get a Pint versus an XR. I don't particularly care about the extra speed that the XR offers. Like I said, I ride this thing to relax and just chill and enjoy myself. I'm not really interested in going super, super fast. The extra battery and range would be nice as an option, but honestly, I don't know what I would do with it. This isn't like a commuting device for me. It's just something that I ride for fun. And on this pint battery, I mean, I've gotten like three hours out of it. And that was ending a ride with 20% or so left. And by that point, honestly, I, I'm done anyway. My feet hurt, I'm just, I'm done. Now it is important to point out I'm a lighter dude. I'm about 150, 155. If you're significantly heavier than me, then you can expect less range and probably less speed as well out of the pint. So who should get an XR? Well, one is if you are a heavier person. If you weigh upwards of 200 pounds, I would say the XR is probably going to serve you better. Second is if you're really interested in speed. So if you just heard me describe my riding style as very relaxed and zen and you're like, oh, that sounds lame, I, I gotta go fast. If you're looking at this as more of like an extreme sport versus just something to do to chill, the XR might serve you better, although I will say that the XR has a wider tire, it's less carvable. So from that perspective, as far as just doing a lot of carving and making tight turns, the pint does have the edge. If you want to go really crazy, some people buy the XR and then put a pint tire on it, but a tire replacement on a one wheel is like a, a big thing. But if you really, really wanted to, you could do that. Another reason to get an XR might be that you plan to use this as a commuting device and you need to travel long distances. The Pint advertises six to eight miles of range. Honestly, I think I get a little bit more than that, but again, I am a lighter dude. And the XR advertises 12 to 18 miles of range. Also, if you plan to do a lot of riding off-road on like unpaved trails and stuff like that, the XR is gonna be the better choice for you. Another reason to buy an XR over a pint is if you have a superiority complex and you need something to point to so that everybody on the internet understands that you're better than them. So if you fall into any of those categories, I think you might want to consider an XR, but otherwise I think the pint is great. But when you're making this purchasing decision, don't look at the sticker price of the one wheel and think, that's it. There's quite a deep rabbit hole of accessories and safety gear. So all in on my one wheel right now with all of the accessories and safety gear that I purchased for it, I am in $1,639.81. Now granted, you don't have to buy accessories, especially over a short period of time. You can spread it out if you're going to. But I mean, I also don't regret any of my accessories. That, that new back foot pad that I got was a game changer as far as riding comfort. The front fang bumper is a safety feature to me, plus it gives the one wheel pint a front handle so that you can hold it by that built-in handle or from the front lip. So I can carry it two different ways. By the way, the XR has the front lip way to carry it on the nose, but not a built-in handle. You'd have to buy a handle separately on the XR. The new helmet was probably the least necessary thing I bought. I did already have a helmet, but I just wanted a different one. The motorcycle jacket, a lot of people would probably argue that was stupid. I think it was a great decision. I mean, safety first, these things are dangerous to ride. And I know myself, there's no way I'm putting on like shoulder pads and elbow pads and stuff every time I go ride. With the jacket, it's all built in. Just throw the jacket on, slap the helmet on, good to go. If anything, I regret not just buying that from day one. Probably would have been a whole lot safer during the learning process. Another thing to know, uh, Future Motion sells rail guards that go on the side rails of the one wheel. If you care about not permanently scratching up those rails, buy rail guards from day one. I did not buy rail guards on day one. I thought I would get that later, but yeah, my rails are pretty dickered now. now. I could still get rail guards and put them over the rails and it would at least cover up how dickered my rails are, but underneath that, the rails will always be perma-dickered now. So I do kind of wish I had gotten the rail guards when I ordered the one wheel. But hey, if you're still here, I super appreciate it. I know this video ran pretty long. As you can probably see, depending on when you're watching this, this is a brand new YouTube channel and I could use some help getting it off the ground. So if you would, please drop a like, hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime I upload a new video and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. I'd super appreciate it. It would mean the world to me. Appreciate it. Peace.